website on the Individual Advancement Program uh, main webpage. And as you have questions throughout the meeting, uh, feel free to throw them into the chat box and I will answer them at the end as I have time. Please also excuse if you hear any coughing. I apologize. I'm recovering from a, from a sinus infection. So I um, hope you're all feeling better than I am today. Uh, so the Indiana Arts Commission is your state arts agency. Um, every state has one. Um, it is funded by the Indiana General Assembly and the National Endowment for the Arts. We are um, mostly a grantor to arts organizations and individual artists like you. Our vision is the arts everywhere, every day, for everyone in Indiana. The Individual Advancement Program is a grant program, and it's meant to support the career development of individual artists in Indiana. The applications for FY19, which is fiscal year 2019, are now open, and they are due February 15th, 2018, at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So today in this webinar, I um, hope that you've found us because you're interested in applying. Um, <clears throat> and today we're going to cover what this program's goal is and its purpose. I'm also going to talk about who can apply to it, what to expect from the public funding process, and tips for writing a really strong application. So most of what I'm talking about today can be found in the guidelines. These guidelines are a PDF. They can be found on our website. It's very important for you to get to know this document very well um, because it has all of the information, um, requirements, guidelines, process uh, for the individual advancement program. You'll want to keep those on hand as you're completing the application and make sure you read them before you start. Uh, if a disability keeps you from being able to read those applications or the guidelines or from keeps you from accessing the application, um, please give me a call or an email and I'll be happy to connect you with the right resources. Uh, so the IAP program supports projects that has a positive impact on any phase of an artist's career and directly benefits the public in Indiana or engages in Indiana audience and community. So here are some examples of things that have been funded in the past through this program. Uh, a ceramic artist built a studio space with some additional contributions from outside the grant. So it, his, his project included grant funds, but it also included outside sources of funding. The artist wrote uh, in his final report after he'd completed it, I now have a fully operational studio to create my work in that's independent of universities to work at. Having a studio located away from distractions and near my home will allow me to push my work in new and exciting directions without the fear of being pulled away from my work during studio time. And in addition to his career development, the project had um, tremendous public benefit and opportunity for community engagement. That's because he chose to locate this new studio next to a local community arts organization. As a result, the artist and the organization uh, share a kiln shed together. It turns out that that space could also be used for large-scale sculptures on display for the public. And the space is now part of a popular regional pottery tour that brings tourists to the city from even outside the state. Uh, this studio also adds to the local First Friday flavor. He, wrote, he also wrote, in the investment from this grant accompanied by in-kind donations, personal finances toward the building of this studio, uh, has broadened the footprint of art in my community. This investment has allowed me to take a blighted property in the historic downtown and turn it into a vibrant space uh, for youth in my county to come and create art. My studio is now fully operational and open to the public, as is the shared kiln shed attached to my studio for the Community Arts Center's utilization. A wood turner uh, acquired a lathe for his shop with this grant. He also took a course with a well-known wood turner. And then he was able to use the works he made in this experience to secure two solo exhibitions. He also taught his newly developed skills to high school students at a local free art day event. A visual artist bought supplies and covered expenses for a residency 
with this grant in order to accomplish a goal of creating over 50 pieces of work in her set amount of time um, with which she could exhibit in a local art gallery. She also decided to donate several pieces to the local Habitat for Humanity for new homeowners to hang in their new homes. So you may or may not already have an idea in mind for this grant. Uh, remember that it should seem like a project that has a beginning and an end, or it could be a defined phase of a larger project. You can request up to $2,000 for your project, and there's no match requirement. You don't need to kick in any of your own money to be eligible. Your proposal should be feasible to complete between July 1st, 2018 and June 30th, 2019. This is fiscal year 2019. If you receive a grant from the IEC, you'll also be required to comply with all the state of Indiana requirements for grantees, like accessibility requirements, privacy consideration, um, and other really fun uh, state of Indiana requirements, um, which you can find all of those in our guidelines on our website. I encourage you to read through them before you apply just to know kind of what's ahead. You also must be 18 years or older, older to apply for this grant. You must have been an Indiana resident for one year prior to the, the deadline, so prior to February 15th for one year. Uh, you should also plan to remain an Indiana resident throughout the grant period. You may not be a student enrolled in a degree granting program to apply for this grant. And um, IAP projects are for you as an individual, but um, it will also ask you to um, consider your project's public benefit and community engagement. And I'll talk more about what this means here soon. Um, you shouldn't propose a project that is in collaboration with another applicant um, with, who is also applying into this program in this cycle. They need to be different projects. Now, you can't be an FY18 grantee, and you may also not be an FY17 grantee. If you applied for either of these years but you didn't, get, didn't receive a grant, you are eligible to apply in FY19. You also need to be one of this year's, uh, this cycle's eligible disciplines, um, and that is for your project discipline. So for this, for FY19, the eligible disciplines are crafts, design, media arts, photography, and visual arts. Folk artists and access artists can apply in any discipline. Access artists uh, are applicants that self-select into the access category when they apply. And this category is for applicants with disabilities. If you select into this category, you'll just be asked to complete one additional question about the nature of your disability, and that is confidential information that is not shared with any panelists, it is not public information. These applications in the access category are reviewed together, um, separate from the rest of the IAP applications. They all are applying to the same for the same pool of funding. Uh, so new this year, you can also select into the early career category. The IAC defines an early career artist as someone who is committed to artistic work as a sustaining career, but has been pursuing this career for maybe more than one year, but less than five years. And that doesn't include any formal education or apprenticeship training in your discipline. You need to have a clear goal and ambition, um, but are, are, still artistic, are still articulating your artistic voice, if you consider yourself an early career artist. Um, you, if you're an early career artist, are not yet considered to be well established, like you don't have major representation from a gallery, producer, publisher, or distributor. And you've not yet received significant awards or commissioned, commissions or sustaining income derived solely from your artistic work. If you think that you fit this description, then you can select into the early career artist category. And that means that your application will be paneled with other early career applications. You'll also be asked to complete uh, just a little bit more information to confirm that you're eligible for that category. So the $2,000 that you're requesting um, could go toward really any element of your project that, that might be very unique to your own ideas or needs or direction as an artist. Uh, they may include, we've seen them include in the past, um, supplies and equipment, facility rental, marketing and publicity, travel transport within the U.S., 
workshops and training. Um, and just to note that you can, uh, you know, these all of these expenses can go toward travel, um, but not outside the U.S. Um, and if you have questions about expenses that you're thinking of that you don't see on this list, just give me a call. Um, most things are very flexible to can, and can fit as long as you really um, make the case for how you are advancing your own career development. Okay, so before we go any further, let's talk about your project. Is it an eligible discipline? And I, just a reminder that you, you may be a performing artist, perhaps you're a musician, but maybe this year you want to explore um, a, new, a new project that's more media arts focused. That, that is eligible in this. So it's your project's discipline, but it may be different than your own discipline as an artist. So make sure that your, your project is an eligible discipline. Uh, make sure it happens between the grant period of July 1st and June 30th, July 1st, 2018, and June 30th, 2019. Does it need any other income or in addition to the grant? And really, do you have a plan for that? Um, your project will not seem feasible if it cannot be uh, accomplished with just the grant funds. And if it cannot, then we just you'll want to include that in your proposal. Show that you have other support that will make it happen. And does it impact your career development? If you feel like, feel like you know the answers to all these questions, then great, let's keep talking. Um, if you're not sure, give me a call, shoot me an email. Um, let's talk through it, and we'll make sure that it's eligible um, and going to fit well within this program. OK, so you are applying for public funds, which means that your application will be reviewed in a conflict-free panel of other artists, administrators, and arts professionals in, in the project discipline. These panelists will read and score your application online on their own time, and then they will get together in a public panel review meeting to discuss each application and make their final scores. Each of their scores are, are averaged together um, and then normalized to the other panels to get a final score for your application. And to be eligible for funding, your application needs to score more than 75 points out of the 100 total. The individual advancement program usually receives more than two to three times the amount of, of funding um, that it can, two to three times the amount of applications than it, than it can fund. So this is a highly sought after grant. The panel meetings are tentatively scheduled for the week of April 16th. Um, you will be notified of the exact date, time, and location of your application's panel review, and you're welcome to come and observe this discussion, but not required. Um, these discussions are recorded and made available online soon after the panel meeting. So with this in mind, uh, my first tip for writing a strong application is to use this, the criteria to self-evaluate. These criteria, you, the criteria for this program can be found in, in the guidelines, and we're going to go over them in depth here. Um, panelists are trained to evaluate your project against these criteria here on the screen. You really need to read, read through these before you start your application, and then I'd encourage you to also read them over again before you submit um, and compare it to your application. Make sure that you're providing exactly what they will be looking for. Okay, so let's take a look at these more closely. The first criteria is impact on the artist's career development is worth 30 points. And really what it means is that the artist provides a clear description of their career stage. And note that either, you know, emerging or early career artists, you might be pursuing a new, new career direction coming from an arts background or another occupation outside the arts. Um, the project is clearly described. The extent to which the proposed project positively supports individual artistic growth and impacts career development. The goals of the project are clearly explained, achievable, and measurable. Both early career and established artists should clearly define the relationship of the activities in the proposal to career development. Both early career and established artists should provide information on the relative quality of the proposed activities. So you should maybe provide a link to our description of a workshop or event that you're planning to attend, for example. The next criterion is public benefit and community engagement. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat box and I will address them at the end. 
So this public benefit and community engagement act, um, really breaks down to that you have activities identified that are open to the public in some way or directed toward a specific audience in Indiana that will benefit from your work. Um, you also should explain how um, there are activities that incorporate an active, two-way, and meaningful ongoing engagement. Uh, this could include seeking to better understand what the community finds relevant, maybe taking arts programming to the community or developing one-time or short-term conventional collaborative partnerships that expand your capacity as an artist uh, or maybe make the community more aware of who you are. We've developed um, another short video that really helps you answer these questions in the application. So um, stick with me here in a little bit and I will show you exactly where to find that and exactly what the application is looking for in this, in this criterion. The next criterion is feasibility. Uh, so we want to know that you can achieve the project goals and activities reasonably within the timeline of this grant. We also want to know that um, your estimated expenses are appropriate and reasonable. Uh, your income and expense totals match. Um, the last criterion is the quality of your work. And that breaks down to that the artist resume includes educational background or any professional employment or other opportunities related to the discipline you're pursuing in this project. Uh, the documentation that you provide, so you'll upload a, a sample of your work, presents your current body of work and supports your proposed project. Overall, the application is presented in such a way that it's, it's clear, it's detailed, it's accurate, um, and that it an independent reviewer can, can review it um, effectively. So really, that breaks down to the spelling and grammar. Is it clear? It's part of your point total because it, it will impact the way that um, the way that the panel can actually review your score. So just have somebody else read over it. Make sure that it's readable and that it's logical. Okay, so after you have determined that your project is eligible and you feel like you can fit the criteria well, then you'll want to open an application. You'll go to in.gov slash arts slash apply. You'll log in or create an account. At the top of the page, you select apply in the, in the uh, menu bar at the very top of the page and you come to this page you see on the screen. Um, when you find the individual advancement program, uh, you click this blue apply button in the right. The other options here um, are to preview this application or send it to Grant Hub. Um, preview, you can open up the application without actually starting a draft assigned to your name. You, if you just want to see the applications before you actually start an application, you could preview it. And if you want to send it to Grant Hub, that's great. It's just another tool you can use to keep track of your grants. Um, we don't work in it as the IAC, but it could be a helpful tool for you. Okay, so I, I encourage you to start your application now if you feel um, like you're ready, if you're going to do it. Um, the deadline is February 15th, 2018 at 4.30 Eastern Time. We won't be able to accept, accept applications after this time. So here's, we're going to take a look inside the application now. Um, it will ask you to confirm your eligibility. You'll provide some information about your, your home county, your region number, your race, um, and other districts. These are just for data reporting and do not impact your score at all. If you opt into the folk arts category, you'll be asked to complete a question about um, about how you acquired your traditional art forms. And if you opt into the access category, your application will be paneled uh, with other applications that also opt into, opt into that category. Uh, these applications, like I said earlier, are applying for the same pool of funding. And um, you'll ask to provide just a little bit more information about the nature of your disability, which is kept confidential. It's not shared with the panel. Okay, remember that this program is meant to impact your career development. It's, this is really worth the most, the most points in the entire uh, application, your career development. 
So <clears throat> you, you can select into the early career artist category here. Excuse me, I'm a little coughing today, but um, you'll also just give a little bit more information <clears throat> about the stage in your career that you feel like you're at here. Uh, if you select into the early career category, then you'll just provide a little bit more information about why you feel like you fit that description in this box below. Um, if you don't provide that information, your application may be reviewed with the general IAP applications. Your project description is the big picture. It includes the main elements in each activity, or of your entire project, really. You'll go into greater detail about the nuts and bolts in the feasibility section, but here you're giving the, the main idea, the main, pro, the main activities that are going to go on in your project. Your artistic growth and career development is, is very important. Um, this is where you'll relate your artistic growth and your career development um, to this project. So what are your goals? How do you know when you're going to meet your goals? Um, if you're referencing other people or groups that you're, that you're going to work with, then provide that information there. Who are they? Why are they um, relevant to where you want to get to? <clears throat> so my second tip is to know your goal and relate everything back to it. This is the community engagement and public benefit section that I mentioned earlier. This question is worth really 20% of your points. <clears throat> you're applying for public funds, for, for taxpayer funds, really. Um, so it makes sense that your project benefits the taxpayers of Indiana in some way. <clears throat> this is not the main focus of your project. The main focus of your project is to enhance your career development. However, community engagement and public benefit can, can actually really deeply uh, connect with that. We know that artists working in the community is good for both the community and the artist. It increases your relevance, your network, and your overall sustainability of your artistic pursuits. <clears throat> so I really encourage you to, to, to check out this video that we've linked to in this question called Defining Community Engagement. And that video focuses on um, you as an individual artist, especially as an individual artist applying into this program, uh, and how you can talk about probably things that you're already doing that fits this, this description and helps you answer this question. So that's my third tip. It takes you probably 10 minutes. Watch the Defining Community Engagement video. Uh, we'll seriously strengthen that part of your application. OK, <clears throat> so in this question, you're asked to describe um, who you believe will participate in your project. I just want you to note that this um, this is, you don't need to know the exact numbers when you first apply. Um, all we want to know is that you're going to be able to um, provide that information at the end of your project. So your this program is funded by the National Endowment for the Arts as well as the Indiana General Assembly. And so there are some data reporting requirements on the back end of that. So in this question, we just want to know that you have a plan for, re for reporting that. Um, you don't have to know the exact numbers at this juncture. And these numbers don't need to be very large. Don't feel like you have to be everything to everyone or, or provide a really wide um, public benefit to this, but that you at least know um, how you're going to know who participated. So this is the feasibility section in the project management. This is where you'll really get into the nuts and bolts of, uh, of your project. Uh, this is where you talk about who else is involved in this? Who's helping you? Um, make sure the panel knows that you've got the right materials. Uh, you've got the right space. Uh, if, you're, if you are purchasing equipment, I, I encourage you to provide like a link, a link out to, to examples of that equipment or the exact equipment that you'd like to buy um, so the panel can, can be able to assess it, um, be able to know that things are feasible and that you've thought through all the, all the pieces of it. <clears throat> okay, so the budget. Um, this starts to feel a little bit scary to some people, and that's okay. Um, it trips people up sometimes, and, and um, so I just want to give you an idea of what you should be putting into these questions. Um, you'll still make mistakes. That's okay. We're gonna. It's just. It's just to, to help the panel understand where you'd like the money to go, and to know that you uh, that it's feasible with the sources of income you have. So. 
um, in this projected cash income, you are going to list your projected income. So that includes your grant request. It also includes anything else that anyone's contributing. Um, so say that you are, um, say the, the whole project is going to need more than $2,000 from the grant. Let's say you are contributing $500 of your own money. You include that here. It'll make the panelists more confident in your project if they know that all the gaps will be covered. Uh, it's best to, to do this just like you see it in the example, in a list of just general of categories and, and things that um, this money is going toward. So in here you see um, where it's coming from. It's, going, it's coming from print sales. It's coming from personal contribution. It's coming from grant request. And then in the total projected cash income, this is the total after you add up all of these in your list. In your projected cash expense, you are going to list the main category that the money is being spent in. So if you're purchasing materials, list what kind and the estimated total cost of that, of that category of expense. And then just like you did in income, you're going to list all of those line items, and that is your total projected cash expense down in the bottom there. So this number should the total projected cash expense should be the same as your total projected cash income over here. So let's say that you have $2,500 worth of expenses. That goes into your total projected cash expenses. You should also have $2,500 worth of total projected cash income. Okay, so your in-kind. These are the things that are contributed to your project by someone other than you feels a little bit different of the ways that you've used in-kind before, but uh, you'll want to list that these items at the fair market value, which is really what it will go for if you were to pay for it. Um, these are not materials or labor that you contribute yourself. This is what someone else other than you contributes. So an example of that might be um, venue space donated by a local gallery or, or, or maybe uh, organic materials donated by a farm. The, this, these expenses or these items don't get included in your cash expenses or your cash income. They only get reported in the in-kind. Excuse me, went one went too far. Um, and then you'll, just like before, you'll add all those items up and, and, and that is your total in-kind. Now the last question down here is your budget explanation. And this is where you'll describe, you know, give more detail if you if, if it's necessary about the um, about how you got to those numbers. So let's say that you are allocating a thousand dollars toward venue space. Um, actually a better example would be a thousand dollars toward toward equipment. Break it down. That's that's exactly you know whatever three easels plus this amount of paint that's coming from this company. So my next step is, is that you want to make sure that your activities, your timeline, and your budget reflect one another. So if up in your project description you're talking about taking a workshop and then also um, mounting an exhibit, but down in the budget, you know, it looks like you budgeted for your workshop, but the panelists might think that it feels like there should be some expenses if you're going to mount your own exhibition. Um, so you'll want to make sure that there are no surprises, basically. Um, if something shows up in the budget that's not explained in the, in the description, um, that will be hard for the panelists to really evaluate well. So make sure that you're covering each of those elements in all of the sections. They should reinforce each other, um, no surprises. OK, now here's your art artistic quality section. You'll upload an artist's resume. Um, that could include your um, previous uh, maybe it's your artistic work experience. It might actually, you might actually have other work experience outside of your work as an artist that supports what you want to do here. If you feel like that's relevant, and encourage you to include it in your resume. Um, your artistic documentation, <clears throat> I also encourage you to choose something that shows your best work. Um, if you're proposing to do something that you've never done before, um, submit artistic documentation that shows, that, that shows a skill that will transfer between the two. Note that there are also limits here for your artistic documentation. Um, this is meant to keep the panelist's workload to a reasonable amount. 
I'll ask you to submit something else if you're wildly outside these limits. I don't recommend using your entire website for your artistic documentation. Um, choose a couple of things from your work that makes the case the strongest. So just providing a general link to your website here in this box, um, I would say not the strongest. You want to be more specific to help the panelists really um, see what you're looking for. Okay, so my last, that's, that's the full application right there. Um, so before you hit submit, my last tip is to have someone else read your application before you submit it. And that person could be me. Uh, if you've never applied to the individual advancement program before, or individual artist program as it used to be called, um, you can request a draft review from me. So to do that, you complete your application. Don't hit submit yet, just uh, fill everything out, leave it as a draft. Email me no later than January 22nd, 2018. Um, I'll email you as soon as I'm, I'm finished reviewing it. Um, they'll be done in a first come, first serve basis. Um, I will leave comments directly in the application. Um, you'll see them when you log in again after I, after I let you know that I'm finished. Um, they'll show up in blue underneath a question that has a comment on it from me. So I'll do my best to give you uh, about a week before the deadline in order to make the, the changes if you decide to. Um, and then don't forget that you still need to hit submit before the deadline. Okay, so if you feel if you feel, still feel excited about the individual advancement program, go ahead and create an account in our online system. Get it, get it going. Uh, watch the defining community engagement video to get your brain thinking about um, how to be strong in that area, or maybe how to explain what you're already doing in that area. Don't forget that the deadline is February 15th, 2018, 4.30 p.m. And there are panel meetings the last week, or excuse me, the week of April uh, 16th and 2018. So after the panel reviews your, your application, their recommendations, they're providing recommendations on your application to our commission. The IAC has like a, a board of commissioners that operates similar to uh, a board of a nonprofit organization. And so the recommendations that come from, a, from that panel go to the commission. And then the commission makes them final, approves them in their quarterly business meeting. And that happens mid-June. Uh, so you will be notified if you receive an award or not in late June 2018 after the commission has approved them. So this image is, um, bear with me, it's actually, it's a Starbucks thing, um, but I feel like it really does capture the moment that we're all in here. Um, you all are here because you love what you do. This can be a tough process. All of it can be really hard. Um, applying for grants can even be a, a tough process. Um, but we really believe that no matter what the outcome, you're going to be stronger for having done the application and having somebody else review it and give you feedback on on kind of where you want to go and your goals. Just like your artwork, sometimes it's just it's just about the process. Um, and I'm also here because I'm passionate about artists making Indiana stronger just by doing what you do. I'm really honored to be working alongside you as you apply for this funding and please don't hesitate to reach out to me as you have questions about it. Uh, I'm going to put my contact information on the screen here. Um, feel free to shoot me an email, call me as you have ideas or questions. doesn't even have to be about the IAP program. Um, I love talking to you about what, what you're excited about. Um, I see some questions in the chat box, so we'll get to those now. And please throw some more in there if you have any. Okay, um, one good question is, how can an artist that, have, that has not gone to galleries or other function, functions make their resume look professional? That's a great question. Um, I'd encourage you to <clears throat> include, you know, if you've ever done work for, for anyone else, for anyone else, it doesn't even have to be an, an, as a working artist in an organization or mounted an exhibition at all, um, include those, those commissions that you've done for other people. Um, I'd also, if they're, it probably depends on the type of artist that you are. Um, and that is a great question to talk through together on the phone, too. So um, 
give me a call if you have questions about things that should go on your resume or ways that you can um, make the resume feel really strong. Um, part of the, the point of the resume is for the panel to see that you have the experience um, to get to where you want to go, the goal that you've articulated for yourself. So that doesn't always have to be you know, things that you might typically find on a resume, like jobs or like, uh, like courses or trainings that you've done or other shows or, or kind of public exhibitions that you've done. So um, yeah, let's talk about that more together. We might discover something else that you should be including in your resume that will make, it, uh, make the panel confident that you have um, the skills and experience to go where you want to go. Okay, another great question. Is it possible to speak to somebody regarding the early career category and whether it is the right fit? Yes, it is totally possible. Please call me. This, uh, yep, somebody asked, will this, um, is there a way to watch this again? I arrived late and having trouble with the link. So, um, yep, we're going to post this webinar um, to our website. It is, you know, in.gov slash arts. You'll navigate to the individual advancement program, and the, the link will be posted there on that page uh, later this week. Doesn't look like there's any other questions today, so um, this concludes the webinar. Thank you all for joining me. And again, give me a call if you have other questions as you, you know, sleep on your idea, and now we're realizing that you forgot to ask about something. So I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye-bye.